the Dieselgate scandal is something we really need to discuss. People have often asked questions about it. People have heard of Dieselgate. They know there's a diesel emission scandal. But if you ask people to explain in depth what it's about, why it's a bad thing and the implications for the motorist, even after a car is fixed, they don't really know what to say. They haven't got all of the facts and all of the information. And I've tried to pull together everything in this video. Dieselgate scandal, really, we think of the Volkswagen Group, but that's not just the case. It wasn't just a Volkswagen Group. In this video, then, we're going to discuss what the Dieselgate or the emissions cheat device is, how it works, what it means for motorists in terms of the emissions, and also what the implications of running a car with a fix are long term. And we can start to see why people have been demanding compensation for this terrific scandal. In round about 2008, emissions regulations got tighter and tighter, and manufacturers found a rather ingenious way of passing the emission test. Now, what they would do, they would basically have the ECU set up for for perfect test conditions and it would run the engine in a super efficient way reducing the nitrous oxide emissions. Now nitrous oxide is nasty stuff. It is linked to so many different health problems and complications that it's not something we really want in our atmosphere. And these cars that were fitted with this defeat system were emitting up to 40 times the claimed levels of nitrous oxide. When you test a car's emissions, you're not using the steering wheel. There is no speed being registered unless obviously you're doing it on a rolling road. You're also running the engine at fairly constant RPM. There is a, a saturation for the test. Now, the ECU has got a fairly easy way of knowing whether you're driving the car using the indicators and using the steering wheel and doing drivery things and speeding up and slowing down, or the car is being tested. That really is the nub of the situation. The defeat device detects these test conditions and creates a perfect scenario to get a perfect score on the test. But as soon as you take that car out, you are emitting much more nitrous oxides and other harmful pollutants. The Volkswagen scandal really affected 11 million vehicles, and they're not alone. Other manufacturers have also been implicated, investigated, or there are ongoing investigations into similar defeat devices to cheat those emissions tests. It was around about 2015, we'd started to discover the true implications of this problem, the enormity, the number of other manufacturers that are implicated as well. When you start testing the emissions from vehicles being driven daily, it is very different from the lab test or the annual inspection that is carried out. What did manufacturers actually do to fix the problem? Well, they were running the exhaust gas recirculation differently during test condition, and they were also using the selective catalyst reduction, the urea that was injected into the exhaust to reduce the nitrous oxides, and they would use that more heavily heavily during the test condition. And in some cases, it was a software fix where the car was adjusted to meet the test conditions or get closer to those test conditions in everyday driving. And in some cases, there were hardware changes that were needed. Physical changes needed to be made to meet the emissions regulations that were originally claimed or stipulated. Now, these cars that were fixed were now disappointing. The drivers are reporting that they weren't getting the same performance, which kind of makes sense. If you're running the EGR more and you're lowering the emissions, you're not going to be burning as much fuel everything's going to be happening in a leaner, cleaner environment and you are going to be down on performance. The other thing drivers noticed was the particulate filter was clogging up more. The primary way of reducing nitrous oxide emissions is to lower combustion temperatures and lower temperatures in the exhaust is what you don't want if you have a particulate filter and this was around the time that particulate filters were being added and this fix basically lowers the combustion temperature to meet the emissions regulations, but it meant that the particulate filter wasn't getting up to temperature. It wasn't burning off the soot particles that it had collected and was starting to become clogged. And drivers often reported poor running, poor starting, poor performance, and particulate filter regeneration problems after this fix was applied. Some drivers ignored the fix and they were quite happy to drive around in a car that was emitting up to 40 times the levels of nitrous oxide that was permitted or agreed when the car was first originally tested and approved for road use. Another big thing that drivers have noticed is a drop in fuel economy. The car is less efficient. It's 
running richer to get the lower combustion temperatures. And that really isn't good for your overall fuel economy. You basically bought a car that now it's been fixed is not performing in any way, shape or form like it was when you first got it. And that really is why drivers are demanding compensation. In some countries, there is a buyback scheme where these cars are being bought back. In others, a nominal sum is being offered to each of the drivers implicated in this scandal. And there's various class actions with no doubt solicitors and lawyers getting a lot of money out of the deal as people get compensation from these companies that were involved in this terrific scandal, probably one of the largest automotive scandals in recent time. It's not just car owners that are seeking compensation, it's members of the public are applying to class actions to sue the manufacturers for the health problems that have been caused by these excess levels of nitrous oxide down at ground level, primarily emitted from these diesel exhausts. Hopefully lessons have been learnt from this scandal by the manufacturers and it's no longer acceptable to just cheat the figures to meet the emissions regulations. They do have a duty of care to meet those emissions regulations. Now, let me know in the comments if you feel that cars are already at peak efficiency. It's certainly true that cars were a lot cleaner than they were 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. Are we moving towards the point where the combustion engine is as clean as it's going to be and the only way of improving things further is going all electric? A controversial statement on this channel, but let me know what your thoughts are on the future of the combustion engine. Have you had a car that was implicated in this emission scandal? Did you have the fix applied? Would you have a fix applied if this did apply to you? Maybe you're not a diesel owner and you're just watching from the sidelines. Let us know in the comments comments what you would do if you were offered a fix that was going to make the car perform less well and increase your fuel consumption and whether you would find it acceptable to have a car that is performing less well and has lower fuel economy than it did when you first got the car because this fix has been applied. If you found this video useful please boot the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so. We've got loads more diesel articles coming up and lots more investigations into some of the big scandals affecting the automotive industry and I've lined up this video and this playlist that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. Watching. See you in these next videos.